Hey everybody, thanks so much for checking in with us for the 10 TV Weather Impact Show. It's Meredith and Aaron. We've got you covered and lots to talk about as we kick off the new week. Yeah, it's been a busy week. A lot of storms across the country. There was, of course, uh, tornadoes in Missouri, Kentucky. We had more active weather even back on Sunday and possibly possibly some more even today. I know. Now, thankfully for us here across central Ohio, we're looking really good in our forecast. In fact, this will be the sunniest day, I guess you could yeah. say, as far <laughs> as it goes spread out over the time versus the rest of the week. We have a lot of rain and storm chances starting as early as Tuesday, but then lingering as we go into the work week. So we will be keeping a close eye on all of that for you. But what you do need to know is there's more sunshine in the forecast for later today. A lot of us already had sunshine earlier, but if you were struggling, Again, the nice thing is we will see a very nice evening ahead. Isolated thunderstorms as we go into Tuesday afternoon and the rest of the week's actually looking to be unsettled at least until we get into the holiday weekend. But you can see temperatures continuing to progress upward toward that 70 mark as we get into the afternoon. And then tonight with those mostly clear skies, it will cool off. It depends if you're a freeze baby like me, you might need a light jacket. But as we go into Tuesday afternoon and evening, there is a very small risk of severe weather for southwestern Ohio. It is pretty close to us, though, and although it doesn't look like we will have a lot of severe weather, we could have some stronger storms that could produce any hazards, and so we'll be watching that very closely for you. And, of course, if any alerts are issued, we'll let you know right away. But the hour-by-hour -hour forecast, you can see those clouds, how quickly they burned off throughout the day. And as we go into tonight, I'll stop the clock here, 5 o'clock, your commute home. You can certainly see that we'll have that clearing continue overnight. And then as we go into your morning on Tuesday, we'll have have some clouds earlier in the day to start and then as we progress into the late morning some isolated showers first and then by afternoon that's when we're looking at seeing some heavy downpours possible at times again it's likely going to mainly be rain but we could have some thunderstorms embedded in there we'll have to keep monitoring that for you, but don't be surprised if you do hear a rumble of thunder. Here's what it looks like around five on the current track of the forecast. You can see I-70 getting some heavier downpours, and then as we go into the evening, more of our southern counties from Circleville down to Chillicothe, Washington Courthouse, and Piketon, continuing to move into McConnellsville and Athens as we go into 930, and then maybe still some lingering showers as we go overnight. So Wednesday morning, starting off with cloudy skies and maybe some isolated showers. And then we could also have a chance by the afternoon for some pop-up storms to develop. You can see that's the case from about noon on. Here's 3.30. You can see it just stays with those chances lingering even into the commute home. And then as we go into Thursday, we'll still have some chances of showers that will be in the forecast. But for the rest of the day today, we stay in the upper 60s to low 70s across the region, mainly sunshine dominating our forecast, especially by the commute home with those skies clearing up nicely tonight. Lows will be right in to the upper 40s with light winds and then for tomorrow we'll see a chance of those showers as I just showed you so definitely make sure you stay connected with the team we will have all the latest for you if and when those storms develop but as we look at the extended period you can see we're actually going to be in our warmest day today for the rest of the work week. Temperatures from here only going down Thursday and Friday. Actually, some very cool air moves in and sticks with us. That'll bring our overnight temperatures down into the mid to upper 40s for a few days. But then by the holiday weekend, the temperatures start to go back up. And the good thing is if you have any outdoor events, I know there's a lot of celebrations of life and whatnot that happen heading into the Memorial Day weekend. Right now it's looking dry and mild, so there's some good news for us. Yeah, definitely nice to see that on the weekend, of course, uh, but looking at Thursday and Friday, I mean, Ugh. having a high of 60 this time of year, it's uh, kind of, I don't want to say it sounds chilly, but it's uh, <laughs> after the 70s and 80s, it's uh, you know not welcome necessarily. Well, and Memorial <laughs> Day is the unofficial start of summer, so yeah. come on, Mother Nature, we need yeah, to start feeling like some, summer again. <laughs> get some more uh, 70s back in here, but hey, at least Sunday we got su sunshine and uh, 70s, so we'll take that especially after all the active weather oh my goodness. we've had recently. Even around here, we had a lot more active weather to our south. And as we talk about some of the severe weather, it was quite devastating for many areas um, Friday, especially through St. Louis, Missouri, right. and of course around London, Kentucky. And take a look at this video from the London area, just showing a lot of that damage. This is around the airport. You can see on the wow. taxiway there, one of the planes that actually uh, got damaged and uh, really destroyed and all the devastation around there. Unfortunately, there were quite a few fatalities around St. Louis and also from the Kentucky area with those deadly storms moving through that region back Friday night. 
And of course, into the early hours of Saturday morning, just a lot of devastation from that area. Some medical supplies were obviously necessary uh, to uh, help everyone just kind of getting back to not really, I don't, can't really say back to normal just because right. it's going to take a long time for really to get uh, back to normal after just so much devastation. And you know that cleanup can just take days, which is absolutely heartbreaking. And, you know, we talk about the tornadoes, and here's actually a video of one tornado that passed through southern Kentucky Friday night. Um, you know, I always have chills. Ooh, yeah, there you go. I just, you know, you don't see it. Mm -hmm. And that's why we talk about time and time again when there's overnight severe weather risks. Now, I know earlier last week we had a couple of days back to back that we had that severe weather overnight. And yeah. it's so important. The NOAA weather radio is honestly the best investment you can have because no matter what happens, it's a crank radio, you have the batteries as a backup, and it's ready to go in case those alerts start going off because sometimes it may not be switched on your phone as well. Yeah, and the biggest thing about those two is they're loud. Like yes. they're gonna wake you up. You know, <laughs> you're gonna you're not gonna sleep through a NOAA weather radio if there's a tornado warning, severe thunderstorm warning issued during the overnight hours because you know, seeing that video like that, you don't see a tornado coming. You might see it briefly with the lightning flashes, but knowing, you know, at least there's a warning and being able to wake up and get to shelter is definitely a good thing. There were so many storm reports that came in though from that. Yeah, I mean, we had so many tornadoes reported, so many hail, so much wind all across the region. We had some wind here in Ohio. We had some hail around Greenfield, some large hail up to baseball size oh my goodness. that Friday night. So definitely a very active situation. And even yesterday, this is a look at all the storm reports from yesterday's wow. severe weather outbreak. You can see there were tornadoes just east of Denver. Actually, a tornado was uh, photographed and uh, videotaped crossing Interstate 70 around uh, just east of Denver, and many people saw it from the Denver International Airport I've as been that, that was uh, tracking That's through. That's scary. Yeah, seeing something just that far away, just a um, you know, really scary situation. And also more tornadoes that were moving through Kansas into parts of Nebraska, lots of large hail as well, and even some more wind damage. So a lot of severe storms yesterday, and this whole storm system is tracking to the east and we're talking about more severe weather likely today across Kansas, Oklahoma into Missouri, Arkansas, a level four risk just like we saw yesterday and more expansive, including Oklahoma City. They're known for getting a lot of severe weather and it's going to be the case here later on today, stretching up to the north into parts of Kansas. So tornadoes are likely in addition to large hail, damaging wind gusts and potential for some very heavy rainfall. It could be talked about rainfall amounts over the next couple of days in this area, especially in Missouri, over three, four inches of rainfall. So flash flooding will be a concern. And then the storm continues to track to the east, bringing severe weather here across the south into the Ohio River Valley. And it does extend up here into Ohio, at least with the lower end potential for a few stronger thunderstorms going into your Tuesday afternoon and evening. So we are going to be watching this system very closely to see whether or not we get any stronger thunderstorms here into central Ohio. But overall, whether it happens here or just anywhere, still very significant. And you know, May, we typically see a lot of severe weather, but it's just never good to see just how expansive it is happening here as of late. And you said it earlier, Kentucky was not the only state to see severe weather over the weekend. This is video of oh, the wow. lightning. I know, right? Just gives you that, that chill, you know, when you hear the thunder right before the thunder and the lightning strikes. This was actually taken in northeastern Colorado on Saturday night. Just wild, just seeing all that lightning and just vivid Oof. lightning. And just 24 hours after that, the area dealt with another tornado. This is new video caught from someone's phone. You can, if of Eastern Colorado, you can see the destruction uh, left behind after that tornado wow. swept through. Many buildings and homes were destroyed and just yeah, very devastating there in Colorado. And again, across the other parts of Kansas and Oklahoma last night. And unfortunately, again, even here today, and something I saw on social media this morning, uh, there was a tornado, I guess, near Greensburg, Kansas last night. And of course, if you know, Greensburg, Kansas, uh, 2007, devastated by an EF5 tornado. And thankfully it did not hit the town. It stayed just to the east, but still just seeing mm. uh, some of the pictures of that was just kind of a nightmare situation. I think that's the hardest thing about our job. You know, sometimes all we can do is give out those warnings and sometimes it hits and sometimes it doesn't. But 
It's why we continue to stress to always be prepared. Yeah, always be prepared. Make sure you have ways to receive warning information on your phone, back up with like we talked about the NOAA weather radio, just multiple ways to receive warnings so you, that you're prepared in case something does happen. You know, it only takes one. Exactly. Well, thank you so much. We'll end on a little bit more of a positive note. Enjoy the nicer weather yeah, today. Yeah, enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> Soak it in before we get those uh, rain showers back in. Well, that's your update here on 10 TV Plus. And coming up later tonight at 6, Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz will be in. But until then, you can catch more news and weather anytime online at 10TV.com. We'll see you later.